Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Butter What Show. I'm uh, your assistant to the regional co-host, Pat Regan, and this is my co-host, Brian Moses. And we're in front of a live YouTube audience. We do this every, the first Tuesday of every single month. And we've got some uh, Raspberry Pi stuff to talk about and some server stuff and network stuff and VPNs. It's going to be fun. And the first thing we've got here is the Brian has put together his proper high KVM version 3 setup. And you want to show us that? I've had this since our, our last episode. In our last episode, it was in pieces right over here somewhere. And this week, because uh, I have a, a project bearing down on me that, that this is going to come in very handy for, this week I had... Uh, I took some time and, and finally got it put together and updated to the latest version of Pi KVM and it is it is ready to go for that project. So what is a Pi KVM? Well the, the product that we're talking about is a is an IP KVM keyboard video monitor that you can access over the network. Uh, you plug so it's it like into, a, it's virtual keyboard and monitor hardware. Yeah, yeah. You you plug a USB cable into a computer. You you power it on. It requires the hat and a Raspberry Pi four. You put it together. You turn it on. You plug it into another computer via USB and it's HDMI. And then you go walk to another computer in the same network and pull up the Pi KVM's web interface. And you're you're working with that computer as if you were right at its keyboard and mouse. It's a lot of fun. The advantage of this, a lot of people just think, well, why can't I just remote desktop in or something? This lets you get into the BIOS. It has virtual yep. CD-ROM and flash drive so that you can install a brand new operating system from scratch. And the hat has ways to, you can wire it into the, onto the ATX motherboard and turn the computer yeah. on and off and things. It's yeah, you can you can wire it into the, the power and reset switches and you could do a you know a long press of the power button or or blip the reset switch. Tubby, I don't have the fancy hat. I have this case full of stuff. Yeah. For my Pi KVM, it's just this is, a regular. This is part of this is part of what the Pi KVM what makes the Pi KVM project awesome. They've had they've had several iterations of hardware, and you can completely do it yourself. You can buy you know a, a Raspberry Pi, a USB HDMI capture card and a couple other trinkets, and you can build one of these and have it working in a matter of minutes. And that used to be the only way. Yeah, right? they're, they're just now selling their own hat where they're putting all that onto actual hardware. Like what I have is a $30 Raspberry Pi and a little $12, $15 dongle and some cables and some splitters and things, some nonsense. The hat is a little pricey, but I think it's a nice, it's still nice anyway. It's I think it's, Cloudfree.shop has it listed at about 150 bucks, and then a Pi is another 30 to 50, depending on. Yep. And the thing, the thing that really makes it awesome is the. Web I know what he's going to say. The, the hardware, the hardware is awesome, but the actual web interface that you work with is is really fantastic. I've used other comparable IP KVMs. I've used IPMI interfaces that are that are built into server grade motherboards. And those interfaces are always, I mean, I want to say awful, but they're not great to work with. You know, you're not... Everybody who uses them is happy that they work at all, that they don't have to drive into the office. And this is great because if you spend the $200 today and plug it into your server, in five years when you throw away the motherboard that, that's in that server, you get to plug this hat into the next one and into yeah. the next one. Or, or when you're, I mean, when you're building that server, especially for people like us who are building them at home, you don't have to buy the server grade, you know, motherboard that's marked up by several hundred dollars for no other reason other than features like what's on Pi KVM. You get to buy a, a less expensive motherboard. You save the money on the hardware, but you keep the Pi KVM every time you upgrade that server. Yep. And you can steal it from that server to put on something else you could, if you need to. You could plug you could it into it. other. Yeah. And it's it's yeah. not locked into that one motherboard, and that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. If you've got a home theater PC and you you just need to you need to use it with that real quick, you could take it down there. You could move it around. You could put tail scale on it. You could you could mail it to your. There's documentation your now yep. on the Pi KVM website how to install and configure tail scale. Is it really? Yeah, but it's in the it, Arch Package Manager. It's really easy. It's fantastic. I want to I want to say that the first thing that I had tail scale working on was my my first Pi KVM that I built. The V2 hardware. That means I can plug my Pi KVM into my parents' computer three states away, 
and leave it there. And from here I can, you know, reinstall the operating system. I don't know that I'd need to do that, but it's an option. I found this, I saw this on uh, Hacker News maybe a month ago. It says June 16th, so I don't know. But this is from Hannah Lee. Hannah has built a little backup solution out of an old Android phone with a busted screen, a little USB hub, and a little, you know, a USB hard drive. There are step-by-step -step instructions on how to set it up, how to do exactly what they did, how to install the backup software they're using. And I just think this is neat because I built a little, I'm doing something similar with a Raspberry Pi and a hard drive that are not here in my house. They're sitting behind Brian over there. I have off-site storage where I'm pointing. on Brian's gigabit internet service over there. As this is recording, it is being uploaded to Brian's house as a backup. Probably. Consuming our bad our bandwidth and degrading our our live stream all over the place. Uh, there are so many places my bandwidth is going while we're doing. I really like this idea because people are buying and breaking phones all the time. All the time. They're not always necessarily getting put to good use, or even could you know you can't trade them in, or if if you do trade them in, you don't get a very good offer from your carrier or whoever whoever buys them. All they're basically doing here is installing Debian in a sub-environment on the phone. So the phone's still there doing its phone thing, but there's a little Debian system booted up in the... It's not probably... I shouldn't say it's not. It's probably not a VM or it's running along. It's using the same kernel as the, yeah. the phone. Can you run TailScale on it? Absolutely. I run TailScale on my phone. So absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You're saying that somebody else could could do off-site backups with their old broken with, cell phone? Yeah. Like you're, and it's kind of like you're doing today? They, I imagine they could do it exactly like I'm doing it because they're just running Debian. I mean, I don't know that the, the Pi might be a different style of style of ARM chip, a different instruction set. I don't know for sure. But And you, can, you don't have to use the backup software they're using. Anything that runs on Linux that has ARM binaries or source code, you can for sure run on here. But I think it's neat because it's got a little battery built into it. Yep. Because it's a phone. It's... This is just fantastic. It's a good idea. I, I like it a lot. And people need to do backups. RAID is not a backup. That is that is a fact. And not a, not enough people have redundancy in their hardware. And the people that have redundancy in their hardware, they don't have enough backups. Or they assume that they have, they have backups because they can survive a hardware failure. Everybody yep. needs way more backups than they than they have. Speaking of offsite backups, I Tailscale is an integral part of my offsite backup. And last month we're pretty this this came out right after we did our last episode. Tailscale announced their new pricing. Tailscale is a VPN. It's a mesh VPN. Not like those anonymous VPN services like privateinternetaccess.com or NordVPN or Nord somebody. VPN. This connects your machines together directly from one to the other. The Tailscale service basically just Points, you, points your machines at each other so they can connect directly to each other. Purely, it's based on, it runs WireGuard under, underneath. And WireGuard is a really cool modern VPN. Their old pricing, I it was not for me. It was, I think it would have been like $120 or $150 a year. Yeah, by the time you tell me that, I'm going to say, well, I may as well just set up my own WireGuard server yeah. and just, okay, sure, it won't be a mesh anymore, but... You know, for four hundred and fifty dollars over three years, I could have worth my time to do it myself, right? But now they've got a new, they've got a new plan, five dollars a month, and I think it's cheaper if you pay for the whole year. I don't remember what I paid, but I ended up paying for the whatever the cheaper pricing was. Yeah, yeah. Well, on their on their old pricing structure, because of how easy it was. I mean, I've, I talk about this in the blogs that I wrote about Tailscale. I've tried to do my own VPNs a couple times. And it was just too much work, too many concepts that I didn't quite yet understand or, or want to learn. You know, at, at their old pricing structure, you know, I was like, well, that's that's kind of expensive. But, you know, when you factor in all the things that I don't know that I need to learn to set up my own, it would probably be worth, be worth it. And their and new pricing, for me, it just was a no-brainer. Yeah, for just, most people, you don't even have to pay. It's free. It's yeah. free for up to 20 devices, and you could do one extra subnet router. Subnet router means, like, I could install TailScale on the router here at my house and connect to all the devices in my home yeah. over TailScale without running TailScale on every device. And really, the free plan is enough for almost everybody. I didn't even really need the paid plan, but I want to support the folks at TailScale, so I'm happy to pay something. I'm excited about that. But my favorite part, the limits on all the plans, and this has been true ever since uh, Tailscale started, all the limits are soft limits. Just because it says you can have only 20 devices, if you put 40 devices in there, they're not going to turn you off on the... They're not going to shut down your... If you're using two subnet routes instead of one, they're not going to force you to stop 
using them or force you to pay. And I'm not going to feel bad if I have to use two subnet routes and 20 devices on my paid plan that's only supposed to have one subnet route and 100 devices. That's fine. I don't mind. I, I feel like that's a fair trade. Wouldn't you think if I'm not using 80 of the devices they think I should be using, but I'm doubling up on... Uh, yeah, there's got to be some, yeah, some give and take there. Yeah, I can appreciate that. But it's fantastic. TailScale, has, it's so easy to use. You just Super install easy. it, you log in, and every device you install it on and log in on can automatically talk to every other device. And you yep. have a list of IP addresses. They, they're static IP addresses. They do... There's some magic DNS that they do. It's all... It's all really slick, and it's surprisingly easy to set up. Shockingly easy. I, if, I, if I can do it, then, well, just about anybody should be able to do it. What do you, what do you find folks out there in YouTube land think? Did, did Brian and I do a pretty good job today? If we did, you can uh, let us know by hitting that like button down there. Or maybe you want to leave us a comment and let us know if we're doing a good job. And if we didn't do a good job... That's something you can leave in the comments, too. You can tell us why we were wrong, what we did wrong, how stupid we are. You can tell everybody you don't like my haircut. We live stream the recording of these episodes on the first Tuesday of every month, and we're inviting you to come join us. Make sure you subscribe to the Butter What channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future live streams and episodes. You, know, you don't even have to wait until the next live stream. You can come and hang out with us in Discord and participate in our community over there. There's a link in the description. So if you want to check that out, you can definitely do that for tuning in, and I hope we get to see you next time.